Look at the bottom lines for some notable AFC teams this season, and now we look ahead to the NFC and project some notable teams that will perform this year, and we start with the Seahawks. So unless you live under a rock, you've seen the infamous Malcolm Butler interception at the goal line in the Super Bowl. However, Seattle still boasts a top defense. They acquired Jimmy Graham and signed Russell Wilson to a long-term deal. Kate, bottom line for the Seahawks. My bottom line was um, in parentheses, no more, and then goodies. And I won't, I'm wondering if Will's going to get that Sierra reference or mm -hmm. not. But anyway. No. No. Nothing. Here's why that's my bottom you. line. Thank you. I don't think they're winning the Super Bowl. I don't think they're getting to the Super Bowl this year. Of course, I think they're going to be a very solid team. But I know you, Will doesn't like going with this, but I got to go with how I feel <laughs> on the Seahawks right now. Something just feels off. Am I right about these Seahawks? Russell Wilson making claims about water and the, the healing powers. Chancellor with his holdout. That defense is still really strong, but it just feels like something's off with them. Russell Wilson now making the kind of money that doesn't allow them to pay other people what they had been paying other people. They had this grace period where they had this quarterback who was making less than a million dollars when Not really anymore. he was playing at a $20 million level. Um, that is amazing. Jimmy Graham at tight end is going to add the downfield option that they've never had. So I think the Seahawks are right there. I just don't think the magic that they've had, like when we saw them in the NFC um, championship game, like, squeeze out that win against the Packers, whatever that magic is, it just doesn't feel like it's there this year for them. But of course, I mean, if in the middle of the season, all this isn't playing out and they look like the old Seahawks, well then invite me back on and I'll talk about the magic that's still there. Okay. I'm not going to begrudge you your feelings. <laughs> in fact, you might see me reveal a few no more these goodies. predictions over the next several <laughs> minutes. Um, Seahawks, really good. think they're going to be right there at the end. But... I think they're simply going to run into a team that can also run the ball, that I think will play defense very well this year. Oh, I know who it is. Who has a better quarterback. I know that team. And so I think that the Seahawks find themselves in the NFC Championship games, but as the losers. Does my little plug say exactly who it is, I think? I hope not. Oh, see, you can't tease it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, that's who they run into. I knew anyway. I just knew intrinsically, inherently. Knew. And there might be a you. little feeling of that for me. There's a little heart in that pick. Right. All right, let's move on, and we go to the East here and begin in Philly. Chip Kelly in the Eagles again looking to run a fast-paced offense with some new pieces. Sam Bradford replaces Nick Foles, and DeMarco Murray replaces LaShawn McCoy. So what is the bottom line for Chip's Eagles, Will? Um, Overhyped, but going to the playoffs. Man, they feel, like a, they feel like a hot tech stock. Everybody's on it. Um, and believe me, I believe in Chip Kelly. I think he's an innovator. Um, I am a Cowboy fan, so again, I don't um, willingly give these bouquets. I don't willingly give these compliments, but I really like Chip Kelly. I like that he goes against the grain. I like that he's innovating in one of the most um, least innovative industries in America, professional football. But I also think too many people are jumping on him right now. And I have this stat right here I heard Mike and Mike talking about the other morning. Lowest time of possession. Eagles had the lowest in the league. Let me just tell you who else was around them. Jags, Bucks, Titans, Browns. Raiders. Those were some of the worst scoring offenses and worst teams in the NFL who held the ball a little bit longer than the Eagles. I think when you make it to the playoffs, you run into teams that can run the ball, play good defense, and play keep away with you. And you just have a hard time getting into rhythm. And I think it's what happens to the Eagles in the playoffs. Somebody plays keep away, and they can't run that offensive up and down the field if you don't have the ball. Yeah. Well, my bottom line is that they're the favorites. Now, I mean that in the NFC East, East not okay. in the overall and NFL. I just think they have a roster filled with high risk guys, but also really high reward. So you got Sam Bradford, that you a guy you got without really giving up what you think you would need to give up for a former number one overall pick. I think he's gonna play to the caliber that Chip Kelly thinks he's going to play. And I think with the Sam Bradford that Chip Kelly thinks and thought and hoped he might have for this offense, that's going to be a really potent Eagles offense. The other place you got high risk, high reward is the running game. I mean, you got DeMarco Murray, so 
you've got this workhorse, but you've already heard Chip Kelly say that he's not just going to give him the kind of workhorse carries and you're going to tag team him one, two. I think that's a really smart move. I think this entire team is kind of walking a tightrope in the same, same way it's a good analogy as like a tech stock, right? Because is this team going to be Google or is this team going to be AOL, which actually still makes a good amount of money these yeah. days. And it took a while Just, for AOL to go down. It's true. It's still hanging on to a clientele. It's aging now. Mm -hmm. But w which is it going to be? Are the Eagles going to be that Google stock? I do think this year they're going to prove that they're going to be trending upward. Does Tebow it... make the team? Yes. Yes. Skip, I hope you heard that. <laughs> Sticking with the East, and speaking of Skip, America's team, the Cowboys are one of the favorites in the NFC with an offense led by Tony Romo and Des Bryant. Sean Lee returns to anchor the defense. What is the bottom line for the Cowboys, Kate? <laughs> I love that I go first here. And I'm so ready. I'm so excited. I know. I know. <laughs> Will. You really hate him? You know, if you asked me that question when I was 12, yeah. the answer would be so much you different. You matured now. Yes. I don't hate them. Yeah. When I was 12, just, I probably... You lost your feeling. I'm <laughs> teasing. I'm teasing. I know you're a I gained yeah. more of, you know, a viewpoint. Right. Bird's eye view now of yes. the situation. You're but I mean, I'm obviously coming at it from someone who has watched every single New York football giant game. So every, let's take this with a grain of salt. But my bottom line for this team is that there are too many ifs. They gave up DeMarco Murray, or they let him go. They've got a great offensive line, and the if there is that we all believe, and we want to believe, and the Cowboy fans certainly do, that you can put anybody back there. We're going to find out. We're going to find out if you can put just anybody back there. You've got a 35-year-old QB. He's playing great. He played great last year, but throughout the course of his career, he has not been making the key plays at the key moments that he's going to absolutely need to do if these Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl. Because at this point with the, the Cowboys, they got to get to a Super Bowl for us, for a Cowboy fan to be like, that's what we needed this year. That is true. And it's not like they go, them going 11-5 and five no, and losing in the NFC Championship game is not the thing. So what we're talking about when we say too many ifs is not that I think the Cowboys are going to be 8-8. Eight eight. Yeah. Because I don't. I think they're going to be great. But do I think they're going to the Super Bowl? No, I think there are too many ifs on that team. You know, locally, to your point, expectations are very high. I'm from outside the Dallas area, and you're right. Anything short of at least a Super Bowl appearance would not be considered a success in Dallas. But interestingly, nationally, there's depressed expectations for the Cowboys. There's only one big if, okay? You said there's too many ifs. There's one big if, and it is the running back position. And I refuse to believe that DeMarco Murray is the difference between 9-7 and seven and 12-4. and four. Will the Cowboys be able to replace DeMarco Murray? Probably not. Will they still be great? Yes. They have the best offensive line in the NFL. They have a top five quarterback in the NFL. He was flawless last year. And there's no reason to believe he'd be different this year. And the one if in the past has also been that defense. Right. And I think that defense is greatly improved. I think Randy Gregory, who the Cowboys absolutely stole in the second round, will be the rookie of the year. He will have over 10 sacks. He's already been getting sacks racking up this preseason. The Cowboys' defense is much, much better than it was last year. They will get after the quarterback. That was the one thing they couldn't do. That's why they lost to the Packers. They couldn't sack Aaron Rodgers. They'll be able to do it this year, and they'll be the reason that the Seahawks fall in the NFC Championship game because well, simply Romo is too good. I mean, that's another if there. It's Greg Hardy. I mean, he hasn't played a meaningful down in a very, very long time. Greg Hardy is it? Greg there. Hardy, we'll see. But and there's he's a not, difference between a drastically improved defense and a Super Bowl right. caliber defense. My bottom line with the Cowboys is they're Super Bowl champions. <laughs> I think hey if now. you're playing safe bets, they are the, one of the safest bets. One of two. Them or the Patriots. Safest bets. Wow. Okay, I will remember that. How about we go to the Big Apple, those New York football giants. Another disappointing season in 2020. 14 with only six wins. Odell Beckham entered his, his second season after an impressive rookie year. Questions remain on defense, though. Jason Pierre-Paul is expected to report to the Giants after losing a finger in a fireworks accident on 4th of July weekend. What is the bottom line for the G-men? Too many holes. <laughs> they just got too many. I mean, and at least when I say with the Cowboys they have too many ifs, I'm recognizing that they have really viable options in all of these places. It's just, are, are, is Romo going to do this? You know, is the running game, are they have the option? And now it's, is, it go, is that option going to perform at the caliber to reach expectations? The Giants just have holes. And specifically on defense right now, I mean, we don't know what 
or who JPP is going to be this year, if he's going to play at any sort of caliber that we've seen in the past. They've got no front seven to speak of. I don't think any on that front seven line other than JPP has more than seven career sacks in any NFL season. You've got a secondary that I'm really questioning. You got all kind, you got Victor Cruz with a calf injury, yeah. and he's also the fifth option. So it's not even like you can say, we got this electrifying Victor Cruz back, the guy that we saw two years ago and three years ago who just lit the world on fire. There's just too many places, and specifically on the defensive side of the ball, where I'm like, who's our option? Not even like, hey, we got a really good option, but is he going to be Super Bowl caliber? I mean, Eli and, and Odell Beckham, they're going to have to combine for like two touchdowns a game at this point to make up for the lack of, of – of defense. My bottom line for the Giants is that they're going to be drafting in the top 10 of next year's draft. It's hard to find teams whose future, at least over the next year, looks more bleak than the New York Giants. And it's amazing. I could find some teams though. Come on. Yes, yeah, you, you can, find, oh, you can find five or six, but they're going to end up about that eight, nine, ten range of, of ten worst teams in the NFL. Before seeing them in the preseason, I was more optimistic. And before the JPP thing, I didn't think they That's were. It's a good thing, thing we're talking today. <laughs> the, it's remarkable how similar the situation is between Peyton Manning and Eli Manning today. Eli has wonderful weapons, just like Peyton. Demarius Thomas in Denver, Odell Beckham in New York. But the problem is the same on offense, the offensive line. Five guys all playing brand new positions this year on the New York Giants offensive line. A rookie at left tackle. It could be ugly in New York. You have to have time to get the ball to Odell Beckham. And you point out, different than Peyton, the Giants also don't have a defense. A defense you can count on. So when you mix this no offensive line with a defense full of holes, that is an ugly concoction. We like Steve ugly. Spagnola. Sometimes we Come still on, Super Steve. Bowls on Come ugly. Come on, Steve. Right? Work magic but on that Eli defense. has how many rings? Thank you, Molly. Yeah. Peyton, wait, has, wait, wait. How, how many does Peyton have? One. How many does Tony Romo have? Uh, he's, it's like, are we, are we looking forward or backward? It's the future episode. Because forward, I'd say one or two. <laughs> Steak is brought to you by the Gillette Shave Club. Join the club now at GilletteShaveClub.com. And Jim Beam, make history. Tim Tebow had his final preseason performance last night. He played in the second and fourth quarter and was 11 for 17 passing for 189 yards with two touchdowns and one interception. But with the cuts looming for the Eagles, have we seen the last of Tebow in the NFL? Kate, we'll start with you. Nope. I think he is their number three quarterback. In fact, I think the storyline was coming in was that he had to win the job from Barkley. I actually never thought that. I thought that this was Tebow's job to lose. I thought Chip Kelly brought him in because he wanted Tebow. He wants that flexibility. He wants those options. He wants another guy and a two-point conversion to run his tricky plays. Tebow fits that mold for him. I think he's an eagle by the end of the day as well because I don't think Matt Barkley is your quarterback of the future. So what's your upside with Matt Barkley? You might as well take Tebow, take the upside in the locker room, take the intangibles, keep him around. The question is this, though. If he's not an eagle by the end of the day, he might just be out of the NFL. Fly Eagles. Is there or another team? Does he become the backup and take Sanchez's job? Dun, dun, dun. Everybody, have an amazing holiday weekend. Thank you so much for hanging with us. We'll see you on Monday.